welcome to Yarn Engineers Podcast. My name is Greta and I come to you from Vilnius, from Lithuania, where I knit, I live, I walk my dog, who is who decided to keep me company today. So, uh, this is Ara and she may lay down quite soon, getting bored of me talking to you. And yeah, this is my update for the month of April. 2023 and it is very nice to see you all again welcome if you are new here or welcome back if it's not your first time watching this podcast uh, i try to record monthly and update you what i have done on my previous month so here we are for the april and i have to admit um it felt like I've, I have knit a lot, then when I see what I have done, I have two finished objects, one very close to finish, and then there is one in the middle. So yeah, we can try to review them all. And I would like to start with the one um, that I'm wearing that is a test knit and it's a finished object uh, already. I made some nice pictures today but uh, I also have a possibility to show that to you. So uh, give me a second to uh, come uh, a little out. So this is Tanker T, uh, a pattern by Annie Udinitz. Uh Let me quickly show this and then I'll talk about. So I made it um, like this, these are sweatpants. Um, the front has very nice uh, garter part and one by one ribbing uh, for the shoulders. Uh, then garter and then stockinette and uh, one by one ribbing at the end. <laughs> Sarah! <laughs> um, yeah, and for the back, I did intarsia and I switched colors. As you can see, light color on the back um, and a little uh, split hem and a uh, longer uh, mm, a hem. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, let me get back closer to you. So uh, I made this pattern from Gazal uh, BB Cotton. It's 55% uh, cotton, 45% acrylic or polyester, um, whatnot. Uh, I made it on 3.5 millimeter needles. I used uh, wooden child goose. And with these needles, I got the gauge that was required for the pattern. Um, I made this tea quite quickly. Maybe I, it took me maybe, let's say, a little bit more than a week. Uh, pure, it would be a little bit more than a week of pure knitting, but I had a little vacation. So uh, we need to add five more days because I wasn't knitting at all. And yeah, I really, really love this. Um, it is very comfortable, um, very cute, uh, very lightweight. Uh, when I was knitting, you know, it, it feels a little bit, um, well, the weight, but once I put it on, it's, it's just amazing. So I did the Intarsia uh, version, uh, because I had two colors of uh, Gazal BB cotton, this darker one that my boyfriend has his sweater uh, in this, and this is the leftover, and I bought uh, two balls of this lighter one. So uh, when I needed, when I was accepted uh, to do a test knit, I was thinking what should I do, how I should approach this. And at first I thought maybe I should do some stripes or something else, but then I decided just to do it one side darker, one side lighter, and I love this one. So yeah, um, that is my finished object number one. And... Uh, I'm already wearing it and I can't wait for the warmer weathers in Vilnius to come so I can wear it every day and, you know, to enjoy this, uh, this knit. My second finished object is Venice shawl. Um, for that one, I have only a few pictures because I already gifted this shawl to my dear friend. And yeah, I will add uh, the two pictures that I have. <laughs> so uh, 
So uh, the pattern is made on 3.75 needles, at least on these needles I got the gauge with my yarn preference. It required some aran weight and some very fluffy mohair in the pattern, but I used a regular mohair hell double. And uh, for the main part, this very light yellow slash white I used Oh, I used actually three yarns. It was Hapsalu, Medara, uh, Lace, Lace yarn. Um, I used two colors, very pastel yellow and white. And I used um, Madame Tricot Paris Merino Gold. And it weighted, everything weighted uh, more than or around 300 grams because there was uh, more than 200 grams uh, from uh, Merino, then around 100 grams of uh, Hapsalu, and the last part, uh, the mohair, was only 15 grams for everything, for the tassels and for the stripes. And um, yeah, the shawl is made from the tiniest part and growing up. Uh, in the styles and uh, uh, the beginning was very fast you know you just knit switch sides knit pearl and so on so far uh, even though at the end it took me a while to do one one row one row of tiles uh, and so on and so on but at the end I was really really enjoying the result I basically made few pictures and I was, you know, thinking to take the shawl outside for, you know, a proper photo shoot. But then the same evening some friends came and I showed what I have done recently and that friend really, really enjoyed the shawl. So, you know, I decided to gift it because she's a dear friend and if she likes it, she can, she can have it. I think she's a knitworthy friend, so, you know, no hard feelings to to give uh, some of my hand knit to someone else. So yeah, I think these are my main two finished objects for this month. And I was really trying very hard to have one more finished object that is staying at home. Because um, if you remember, for the month of March, I had this... Um, roulette game for myself and I was left with quite a few of projects that were in progress and I decided to work them on one by one uh, and you know to to use them so um, let's start with a, a project that is closer to finish um, so oops yeah, yarn so this is uh, my Hmm. how to call it this let's say this is my uh, no frills sweater but in uh, in more thick no not thick let's say it's no frill but in denim washed uh, yarns so the yarn is yarn art denim washed uh, this is the beige color and Sorry, I have some green leftovers for the body. So that's what I have done during this month. I finished my sleeves. You know, the yarn is weaved in just, uh, I, I'll cut it once it's washed and locked and, you know, in place. So I finished the sleeves and now I'm on the body part. Uh, I need to knit a little bit more in this beige color. And then I will start adding uh, green stripes. Uh, I already counted the grams when I need to start uh, working on them. So this is how it will look at the bottom of my sweater as well. And I can show, do a quick preview what I have done and how I would imagine this. So uh, the sweater is done for uh, maybe not so warm weathers um, here in Lithuania. Do you see this green, I don't know, uh, green uh, feeling in myself? Even though my hair screams red, 
um, in clothing I'm all green at this moment. I don't know, some kind of a period. And yeah, hey, they, these two suits together, so I may, you know, uh, have a combined photo shoot. <laughs> so yeah, that's how much I have done. Um, it basically covers my hip, my hip bones, and I still have plenty of this and quite a bunch of the green yarn. So I really, really want to finish both of them and forget that I ever had them. Because um, for the green one, it, it was quite easy to use it, but... Oh, goodness me, I'm all in the yarn. But for the my version, uh, I don't know, the yarn was uh, in my stash for maybe 40 years. And yeah, if it was not for the roulette, I wouldn't use it maybe even to this day. But luckily, roulette made me to use it and I'm happily knitting and finishing this. And I will have some kind of a, you know, wrap to walk the dog or go anywhere when the, the evening is not as hot as I want. Yeah, so this will be more than 350 grams because I had six balls of 50 grams in beige and I had um, a little bit more than one ball in green. And yeah, th this is quite close to finish. Um, we have a long weekend uh, this month. So today it's Saturday, uh, Sunday and Monday are days off. And if I wouldn't decide to do something else with my life, I may finish this uh, cardigan as well. Oops, sorry, Sarah. So yeah, uh, I'm knitting this in 3.5, 3.5, yes, yes, 3.5 or US 4 needles, which I will use my lo lovely ones. And yeah. Oh, and for the sleeves, uh, you know, I decided to start using my Knit Pro denims <laughs> or knit pro jeans. How do they call them? How are they called? Knit Pro denims. So uh, at the first, on my first sleeve, I, I don't remember which one it was. Uh, so uh, I was using the body on 3.5s and I decided to use the same 3.5s for the sleeves in the round. And uh, it turns out that on small circumference needles, uh, my gauge gets way more smaller. And it was very, very obvious that there was something different from the main pattern. So I ripped it out, uh, took four millimeter needles, and then it was okay. And on four millimeters, uh, there's no difference between the body and the, the sleeves. So now I have one lesson learned from myself. And yeah, I feel like I'm rushing a bit, but that's the way how I usually work. And yeah, this is my work in progress number one. And my work in progress number two is also in my magic basket of everything or at least my projects. So, ah, Jesus Christ. Okay, let me put this one in the basket and talk with you about the second one. I still, well, I mix these two uh, depending on my mood and how tired I am after work. Because if I'm very tired, I can just take the sweater and clean plain stuck in it. If I'm not that tired, I'm taking the shawl, my porcupine island shawl, and I can work on it quite a bunch. Now let me try to see if I can do everything or anything with this. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So this is my porcupine island shawl. I, I have this much done already. It is, it has lace motifs now and it will switch to some kind of a tree pattern, I would call it. Uh, but now I'm in transition, so I need to finish uh, these leaves and then we'll move forward to something, some other. Um, in the color palette, I'm from the orange going into the reds, if you can see. And 
yeah, this project is going way slower because you can see how many stitches in lace I have here. Bear with me before I lost any stitches. It happens to me quite a lot recently. But yeah, you can see how many stitches and they are in lace. And you know, I have to follow even it's not very hard, but it is still a pattern. And from time to time, I need to count things to adjust markers or something else. After each uh, pattern repeat, I placed those light bulb markers. And yeah, so I know where I'm at. And if I made any mistake, it is way easier for me, you know, to catch up. These are NetPro Cubics. Nude Pro Nova Cubics and it's three millimeter needles. And they re are really nice with this sheepies whirl color. And as I remember, uh, the pattern was suggested by my dear friend and the yarn was gifted by same friend. So I can't wait to finish the shawl and use it in summer. Because even it is summer, I do like sometimes to cover my neck because I get my throat sore quite easily and I really like to keep it warm. So yeah, I think that's it from my work in progress as well. And we can move to the last part, um, the usual last part, which is called acquisitions. And I have to admit, I have quite a bunch of acquisitions. So, uh, let me get another bag, because <laughs> why not? By the way, this one is from our local yarn shop um, called Mizgima Mania. As you can see, the bag is already used quite a lot because it's my shopping basket, but a few days ago I went outside with these yarns and it just happened that I left them there. So, what do I have here? Mm. Where should I start? Let's start from the top. So uh, the first yarn reached me from Brazil. Uh, I have a colleague who works in Germany, in Berlin, but originally she's from Brazil. And uh, in winter she was visiting her uh, relatives in, in Brazil. And I asked if there would be a possibility to squeeze in a tiny ball of yarn uh, for me, you know, uh, just to feel how it looks and to have this, I don't know, checkbox that I had a yarn from Brazil and she very dearly accepted it. And now I have a ball of penguin paratapet, paratapet, whatever. It's a very nice uh, forest green color. Mm, yeah, it is 100 grams, 100 meters, 100 percent of wool, and I can't wait to work this into something. It may be well, the yarn is very fluffy, and I would maybe do a hat or a cowl, uh, something quite small, so I can use on my everyday uh, basis because that's the way how I like things. I don't like, you know, to knit something and to wear it once uh, when I put so much effort into my thing. I don't know, it would be a sweater, a dress or something else. So yeah, looking for patterns for this, but maybe a little bit later because summer is coming and the wool, mm, I'm into cottons and the stuff right now. So, okay. Uh, let's work them this way. The next one uh, was from uh, a couple. Uh, the couple includes my dear friend and his girlfriend is the same one that got my wild Venice shawl. So uh, the boyfriend part <laughs> of the couple uh, went uh, into, into went to Sweden. Uh, quite a while, maybe sometime in March, and he brought some very nice yarn for me because again I asked if there would be a possibility or he was walking by 
maybe he could just went in, grab a ball of yarn and get out for me. So this one reached me from Sweden. This is also a hundred grams. Um, it's Ultzentrum Öland. I'm pretty sure it's 100% hand dyed wool. Um, I checked in on the website. I think it's around 300 meters of this wool. And I also have this for some kind of accessory for me. Uh, the yarn is a little bit rustic, but I think after the wash, uh, it should soften up and I just need to find also a nice pattern for me or anything in the house to wear this. So this is yarn number two, again, 200 grams. Then the same couple now together visited Amsterdam. I don't know if I forgot that they were planning to visit this or it just, I don't know, slipped my mind. But they still remembered my wish to have a yarn for every country possible. And so, imagine this. They are uh, standing by myself, by me, and telling me how they visited Sweden, brought this yarn for me and give, gave it to me. And then they are talking about the other yarn that they got in Amsterdam and nothing else that I can see is this. And I can recognize it, I don't know, from a mile. It's West Wool Tanda. It's Beatrix batch number eight in this amazing neon orange. Well, to me, it's neon orange. I can see that's the same to you. And it's 10% textile, 90% 90, 90 Falkland Merino. Uh, it's non superwash. So soft, so soft. I can already imagine, I think, a hat for me uh, because I walk the dog in winter and I have basically the same orange color uh, jacket and sweatpants that are from orange to red color so you know people can see can see me uh, from way far and when I have hat in this I basically like a light, light bulb outside in winter or in the autumn when everything is gray so yeah from this I definitely will knit a hat for myself uh, the one that I can walk the dog in so basically I'll use it every day and I have to make a little, I know, today I visited uh, my hairdresser and now I have this crazy thing on top of my head because uh, it was quite windy when I got out and my hair woofed out quite a bit. So, sorry, because, so, I mean, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so this is the third 100 gram skin for me. Let me continue from traveling around the globe. Well, let's stay in Europe because the next two yarns are also European. This one, uh, Bea Garn Silky Yak Moss Green is from Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, this one was brought from the same friend that gave me this. And now since she visited uh, Denmark, she brought some yarn for herself and brought this amazing ball for me. This is 65% merino superwash, 20% silk and 15% yak. It's 120 grams and in 100 grams there is 400 meters of the yarn and here it should be around 480 meters. So I can basically knit a sweater to myself or a ranunculus for summer or maybe something else that's so nice and so soft that I can't tell you. So yeah, this is that one. And the same friend told me that once upon a time she was in Sweden, in Sweden, in Spain. And then she found this amazing hippie fibers yarn 
in her stash uh, from her previous trip or maybe she sent it to herself but yeah this one is 100% merino superwash single it's 100 grams 200 meters and it has same basically same green as this one so maybe maybe I will match them and we'll see what comes up so for the month of April I have half a kilo of new yarns oh boy I basically knitted half a kilo in one month so well did for that at least I haven't grew my stash into the bigger side but it took me out a bit so yeah we'll see what I will do in April I my plan number one is to finish these two the wrap and the shawl and then I really really would like to cast something new because I was a good girl and I haven't casted on anything except these two test knits but these were you know test, test knits they had due dates and sorry and you know it required me working quite prolifically on these so yeah I want to cast on something new I'm thinking to use my uh, advent calendar from Asta from Die to Knit and I want again to make a e cardigan maybe something with the buttons this time because I have multiple wraps and you know I would like something to to button up or to use a zip I don't know we shall see how it will come out and to use as much yarn of the calendar as possible because once I'm done with the you know make main garment then I can use leftovers for socks or for I don't know mittens or something else so yeah I think these are my main plans for next month and you know uh, spring is blooming I don't know skyrocketing here and summer is just around the corner and I know that once I visit my village my hometown I will have less and less time to knit because there are some other jobs to do so you know as it is still possible I would like to do as much as possible and yeah I think that will be it for today I spoke quite a lot in basically 30 minutes thank you very much for staying with me watching me talking and sharing you know everything that I did last month please share like subscribe tell your friends and hopefully I'll see you at the end of May with some of my new projects so thank you once again hope to see you soon bye <laughs>